All right, electrical automotive students, uh, we're going to take a look at testing a battery. This we're going to use kind of old school technology. This is the old carbon pile tester. These are still out there, believe it or not. So again, we'll go ahead and show you how to use this, and then we'll show you a newer version of this kind of technology. Now, the idea of this test is we're going to apply a controlled load for a fixed period of time, and we are going to then watch the voltage. If the voltage does not drop below a minimum threshold, then we're going to consider, consider the battery good. Uh, all right, so battery located right here. It's a teeny little thing on this lovely fit. Let's take a look at the tester, though. All right, now here's the tester again. This is the old SunVat machine. Uh, it's got volts, guts, amps. When we do our battery load test, what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that the dials are in the proper places. Now, if we look at this, charging may be a little difficult to see. I'll zoom in on that some. All right, we've got charging and starting. We're not going to even mess with the regulator or diode stator tests. Charging, position two, that's blue. Starting, position one, that's red and green, but we're going to concentrate on the red. Now, what the red and the blue are going to refer to, the amperage. Uh, if we take a look at the amperage scale, we've got one in red, one in blue. Now, for those of you that are colorblind, the top is blue, bottom is red. The top blue is good from zero to 100 amps, and the bottom is good from zero to 500 amps. So when we're dealing with starters, that's why we're in the red, zero to 500. Alternators, again, this machine's been around for probably 30 plus years. Way back when, it wasn't very common to have alternators that put out over 100 amps. Okay, today, I don't know if we get any alternators that really put out much less than 100. So, in some cases, if I actually go to the starting uh, scale there when I'm testing alternators to get over 100. All right, we're going to stick with uh, the battery tests, which is actually going to be part of starting. So, we're going to use the red. So, make sure that I'm down here. We're going to go in position one. Okay, next thing we're going to do is make some of the connections. Now, as far as the connections go, we've got just red and black leads. The jumper, just like a jumper. All right, red and black goes in a positive negative post of the battery. This is an inductive amp probe. We'll talk about this in just a little bit. Connections made, black on negative, red on positive. Now the last connection we're going to make is with that inductive amp probe. Now I want to talk a little bit about what this tester does. As I crank down clockwise on that, I decrease the resistance of the load. Uh, when I decrease the resistance of the load, naturally amperage is going to increase. Now I'm going to do this hopefully in a controlled manner. I'm going to count the number of seconds, hopefully to 15, and I'm going to watch to see what the voltage is at the end of those 15 seconds. Now. Where does that inductive probe go? Okay. A lot of folks have problems remembering where this goes. Well, what I attempt to tell everybody is the test equipment here, this is the load. Okay. So current that I'm interested in measuring is going to pass through the test equipment leads. Okay. So what I'm going to do I'm going to take the inductive amp probe and I'm going to put it around one of these leads. Doesn't matter which one. Current leaving the battery is going back in the battery, so current in the one cable is going to be the same as the other. Now, as far as the arrow goes, I really don't put uh, a lot of emphasis on the direction of that arrow when I'm doing a battery load test because I know when I apply the load to that battery that the current I'm measuring is flowing out of the battery and back in again through my test. So I'm not going to worry about what direction that's on. Now, one thing I should do before I place it around, I need to make sure that my zero is set. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the amp. And the zero is offset just a little bit, so I'm going to need to zero it. 
Move the zero adjust. Like that. Okay. There we go. I'm zeroed. I'm going to put the Ampro back on. And again, it doesn't matter which cable, as so long as it is the cable from the machine. Okay, now the test. To do a carbon pile test or a load test, I need to find what the cold cranking amps of the battery are. Now, not cranking amps, cold cranking amps. In this case, cold cranking amps happen to be 340. What I need to do is divide that into two, and that's going to be the load. So 340 divided by two is going to give me... I don't know, 150 makes 3 plus 20, so 170. So I do 170 amps. That is my controlled load. Now, I'm going to load it to that. I'm going to hold it for 15 seconds while watching where my battery voltage goes. So let's give this a whirl. All right, I'm going to dial it to about 140 amps. All right, looks like we've dropped down to about 9.6. That's the minimum. Okay, so this barely passed the test, but that's the idea of doing this test. If it had failed, I would have charged it, tried again. If it failed again, condemn the battery, put a new one in according to this technology. All right, that's all I've got with this one. All right, here's the other piece of equipment I talked about doing a carbon pile load test on the battery. Uh, this one's an older snap-on, a little higher tech than what the VET uh, 40 was, but not by a whole lot. Uh, as far as the connections go, it's exactly the same. The big uh, alligator clamps there, they're going to go on the battery, red for positive, black for negative. And the inductive amp probe, again, is going to go around one of the cables from the piece of equipment. Since, again, that piece of equipment is the load, that is the current that I'm interested in looking at. So again, that inductive probe goes around the piece of equipment's cable, not around the vehicle cable. Uh, you'll see there is a time when we do go around the vehicle cables, but not for a battery load test. All right, we'll go ahead and make the connections. Connections made now before, I actually connect that inductive probe, I want to make sure to zero that amp meter if necessary. It's already zero, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that connection, final connection. Again, I don't care which one of these cables it goes along because, again, current's going to leave the battery and go back to the battery, so if current's going to be the same in either of those cables. As I described earlier, I really don't put a lot of emphasis on the arrow or the direction of that clamp because I know when I load this battery, whatever current I'm reading is the current that I need to measure. The plus or minus makes no difference to me during this test. Okay, for this, again, much simpler, a uh, little more intuitive than that uh, the old VAT machine. Uh, it's connected, I get 11.8 volts. Uh, I know that I am less than fully charged, ideally. If I see a voltage like that, I would go ahead and charge it until I get at least 12.6. Because again, testing a battery that is low on charge is not going to give me accurate results. But just for the purposes of the video, we're going to run with it. All right, so I know this is a 340 cold cranking amp battery. I know that for a carbon pile load test, I need to load it to half cold cranking amp. So 340 divided by two is going to give me 170. So 170 is what I'll load it to. Now this one actually counts the 15 seconds for me. I don't have to count it. So we'll go ahead and give this a whirl. This one's a little touchier than that VAT machine. In that case, I was down under 9 volts, so this pass, or it failed. And I knew it would fail because it was not fully charged to begin with. 
but you get the idea of how to run the test like this. Now, if this was a real test with a real vehicle here, I would go ahead, recharge it, and retest it. Okay. All right, hopefully this clears some things up as far as doing battery load tests.